We named him Katana, after his grandfather. He was sweating a lot and couldn't stop crying. It was one day's walk to the clinic, but it was too late. We buried him next to his grandfather. I have now had other children, but he's always in my thoughts. We thought the baby was coming. It was going to be our first. There was so much blood. She never held our little girl. I baptized her Mary, but she was too small and weak. Neither of them had a chance. We had been together since I was a girl. We were both born in this village. Our neighbor was the first to fall ill. Then there were so many. They called it an epidemic. My husband was strong, but once he fell ill, he never recovered. I liked playing with her. We would run after each other. When it started, she stayed sitting all day. Mama and Papa argued about what to do. Auntie came to give her medicine, but it did not work. I sometimes dream that we are still running together. Twenty years ago, the malaria situation accounted for about one in five of all deaths in young children in Kenya. And that, that was, you know, a pretty horrific position to be in. In the mid to late 90s, malaria became recognised as a major sort of international issue that required a lot more investment. About 28 million Kenyans live in areas that puts them at risk of malaria. And the government of Kenya, through the Ministry of Public Health and Sanitation and the Division of Malaria Control, and our various partners have come together to put in place interventions to try and reduce this risk. Malaria is such a big problem for Kenya that no single partner can tackle it or effectively manage it on their own. And in my opinion, government has been brilliant and has preferred to take a position of coordination amongst all available resources. This includes the private sector, the civil society organizations, and bring us around one table to align ourselves and say then, great. If you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. Global Fund has contributed significant funding. Um, US government, WHO, UNICEF and others. DFID then allocated significant funds towards fighting malaria in Kenya. To date, we have spent £60 million on supporting distribution of insecticide-treated nets. So they're now distributed in all malaria endemic areas in Kenya for free to pregnant women and young children. Here we are in the antenatal clinic. It's uh, the point at which expecting mothers come for services. We deal with distribution of insecticide-treated nets, targeting the pregnant women and children below the age of one. Every time a client comes, a new facet, we issue a net. At the first contact. Even if they come at 40 weeks, we give them. And also the kids, they come after six weeks. We don't consider whether the mother was given during pregnancy. Now we give for the other one year. Do you think that this program has created any impact in terms of malaria intervention? Cases which were coming so many for malaria, they have gone down. What you see here is a reflection of what is happening in the country. 
the free distribution of nets is really saving lives by decreasing malaria cases in the Republic. The private sector is a key ally strategically to be able to reach people and reach areas um, that the public sector can't reach. The private sector incentive is to sell nets, not necessarily to sell insecticide treated nets. And insecticide treated nets are of far more public health significance and importance and effectiveness. So 5 million retreatment kits have been provided through the private sector free of charge. Today we are at a small net manufacturer based in the uh, old town of Mombasa. They produce about 300 nets a day. PSI Kenya distributes a treatment kit to all small net manufacturers, free of charge to be bundled with the nets. The treatment kit available is uh, Kyotrin, which is branded as Power Tab Extra. Once you treat your net, it becomes a longer lasting insecticide treated net, which will go a long way in saving lives. Not everyone has access to the fixed health facilities. And so we've also developed community outreach programs. The outreach activities is not just provision of the service, but also demonstration on education on how to use these services. This is a community session. So we come and have a community talk to try and address what are the solutions that you would be able to offer yourself to be able to make sure that you're sleeping under a net every night. Nini ni kina kufanya usilale chini ya neti kila usiku? Iki jifundi ka hivi, kifua kina vuta, dawa, nitafanya hivi. Kitibu hile neti yako, hile dawa unafaa kuya nika inze kabisa, we had to look for community-based people working within their own communities and solving these issues. How's the net uptake been? Most of them have nets. Yes. But they don't know how to use the nets. But after going even door-to-door -door session with them, yeah. I've seen a great change. One of the reasons someone is not using the net is probably the house structure. So what we do is take a walk with them into their own homes and show them how to hang that particular net. Another thing that we do within the community is to have community drama. So here is where we have our awareness creation, where we just have a large mass of people getting information on net use. This is happening across the country. Going into the community is really, really important because that's where the problems are. And you can only address their issues by going directly to them. Government has done a lot of efforts to supply mosquito nets for Kenyans to use, but there still is a gap between the net coverage and the net use. What has been done to try and address that is development of multimedia communications campaigns that all are carrying one message that everybody, every night, should sleep under a mosquito net. We are currently at our creative agency. We work hand in hand with them in development of our radio commercials and our print materials, which range from bus branding to wall branding to directional signages and other posters. After the creative work is done, it's normally taken before the Division of Malaria Controls, IEC Technical Working Group for all approvals. We try and do as much radio as possible, especially on regional radio stations. This is one of our biggest channels of getting the malaria messages out there. Today we're in the process of editing a TV commercial. We package messaging for the Health CCTV. This is a TV which is found in rural health facilities. With all our communications, be it radio, be it TV, be it print messaging, we ensure that we get the most impact. And to do this, we do a lot of research. These campaigns have been really successful. And now more people are sleeping under nets, more people are treating their nets. And if we keep at it, we are going to, we are going to realize the dream of becoming a malaria free Kenyan. The other intervention that the government has put in place is to provide effective treatment for those who are already sick. In a year, we distribute about 14 million uh, doses of uh, ACTs, uh, malaria treatment recommended by the World Health Organization, to government health facilities and also 
health facilities run by faith-based organizations. And these treatments um, are provided at no cost. I am the nursing officer in charge at the Nyanza Provincial Hospital Pediatric Unit. When a child comes in and uh, the mother thinks the child has malaria, the child is seen by the clinician who will order for a blood slide. This is the laboratory where we do the tests for malaria. Once the test has been done, it is positive of malarial parasites, the children are started on treatment immediately. If it's a child who is uh, generally stable, the child is given ACT. ACT compared to the other types of drugs is much better. Once they are treated for malaria with ACT, then they don't come back and the drugs they get free so there are no challenges of not being able to buy the drugs or something like that. As a Kenyan nurse and especially a nurse working with the children, ACT has really done a lot of good to us. Our children get better faster, they don't have to be in the world for a long time and they don't die as much as we used to have death cases in the past. Progress with malaria control in Kenya has been very good. They are not burying children like they used to bury children. We're seeing hospital admissions due to malaria reduced by half in some parts of the country. On the Kenyan coast you've seen a fantastic drop in disease rates, children presenting to hospital such that we can't actually do clinical trials now of vaccines and drugs because we don't have enough cases. The Kenyan government has to sort of stick its hand up and say, well, this is a result of what we've invested in. The risk of malaria has reduced, but the risk is still present. So we're not there yet, but we're going in the right direction. Now, if donor funding dried up, it would be a disaster. Because what we've been able to achieve over the last five years is prevent many people being infected with the parasite. So they haven't developed their natural immunity. There will be more deaths than we've ever seen in Kenya due to malaria. In order to achieve a malaria-free Kenya, what we need is everybody sleeping under a treaty bed net. We need to make sure that everybody has access to a drug that works if they have malaria. We need to do all these things to be able to realize our vision of a malaria-free Kenya. As a Kenyan, when I think of a future Kenya, a future Kenya without malaria, I envision this to be as a Kenya whereby we have healthier-born babies because of no incidences of malaria during the course of the pregnancy. As a Kenya whereby we have a healthy and working nation with fewer people bedridden and losing time off because of malaria. As a Kenya where children in primary school are not missing days out of their learning or out of their play and out of their fun activities because of malaria. A Kenya whereby we do not necessarily lose my nephew, my niece because of a very easily preventable illness and that is malaria. If we sustain the momentum and in fact increase the efforts that we are doing as partners, a malaria-free Kenya is totally possible.